Now, here's what's interesting. You and I, we have the potential for two different destinies, life and death. And whether you have life or whether you have death in front of you depends upon which vine you are grafted into. There are only two vines that you can receive your life from. You see, if we pull a branch from a vine, that branch is going to quickly die. All of us in here, we are rooted in one of two vines. Notice that we're told here that it is the vine of the earth. It is the vine of the earth that is producing the grapes of wrath. And this is a vine that is growing This is a vine where we are seeing overspreading darkness take place around our world. It's what Paul spoke about when he said to the Galatians in chapter 1. He said that he might deliver us from the present evil age. Now in the Greek language there are two different words translated into the English for evil. The first word is known as kakos. And this means something that is inherently evil. It speaks of a person that's just a very bad dude. It speaks of that person that's just a very bad individual. But it's an individual that keeps their evil to themselves. They don't care what you do. Be a goody goody two-shoe for all they care. Be a Jesus. I don't care about that. Just leave me alone. But they keep their evil isolated behind the closed doors of their own house. And they're happy with how they live. That is not the word that Paul uses for evil here. The word that he uses for evil in Galatians chapter 1 is paneros. And paneros describes evil in active opposition to good. It means not only evil in its nature, but viciously evil in its influence and actively harmful. See, it wants to bring its evil into government. It wants to bring its evil into school boards. It wants to bring its evil into the education system. It wants to bring its evil into even churches. There is an evil in this world that is not content with being evil by itself. It is not happy unless it is growing and spreading and corrupting. And notice how in every direction that you look today in our world, there is this overspreading darkness. How long is it going to be until they're going to be able to have sex with little children? How long is it going to be? Look at how rapidly everything is changing around us. That is the vine of this world. And if you are connected to the vine of this world, you have death waiting for you in your future. Now the second vine is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said in John chapter 15, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. There are only two vines. Listen to me. There are only two vines that you can be connected to. If you are connected because you have a meaningful, genuine relationship with Jesus Christ, what's going to be coming out of your life is the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. If you are connected to the vine of this age and the vine of this world system, what's going to be coming out of your life is growing evil and corruption. For those of you who are grafted into the vine of Christ, you have incredible life waiting for you through all of eternity. For those of you who are grafted into the vine of this world, there is hellish judgment heading your way. Again, Joseph Sess tells us this, what strength have grapes against the weight and the power of a man when he comes to set his feet upon them? The riper they are, the more helpless. The heel of omnipotence is upon them, and they can only break and sink beneath it. Now this is what you have in your future if you are rejecting Christ. And it's such a tragedy because all you have to do is say yes to Christ. Do you understand that? He has made us a proposal. Imagine a young man proposing to a young woman. What is he looking for? He's looking for a yes. 
Just say yes. And this is what the Lord has said to you and I. Just say yes. And if you will say yes to Christ, you will discover that you have the Son. And he begins to work in your life. And he begins to fix relationships. And he begins to put back together the disasters that you have caused in your family and in your neighborhood and wherever you have created these messes. And all you have to do is say yes to him. And this is what I would ask of you. If you're here tonight and you know that you are not right with the Lord, you know that you do not have the Son, just say yes, and you'll have the Son. And I'm wondering, is there anybody here you want to say to us tonight, I want the Son? If you just raise your hand, I'm going to pray for you now, and we'll give you a Bible, and we'll get you set in a growing, fruitful relationship with a king. Is there anybody here you want to say, I don't have the son, I want the son? Just raise your hand. Now, for those of us who are the followers of Christ, remember what the writer of Hebrews tells us again in chapter 10. He says, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. And then he says in verse 25, exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. The closer we get to the end of time, the more serious and sold out we need to be for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I encourage you, brothers and sisters, if you are telling me you have the Son, then let's live full on for Christ. And let's make sure that our lives are going to count for his glory. Time is short. I'm telling you, time is short. Tomorrow is promised to none of us. We have today. Let's make sure that we allow today to count for the glory of Jesus Christ. Let's not be Christians in name only. Christians because we give God an hour of our life once a week. Let's make sure that we are the genuine articles who are sold out for him and we are watching him change us and we are watching him use us for glory. Let's not be like the army of the Franks. The army of the Franks, when they would go into warfare, when they would go into battle, they would be baptized wholesale. Entire divisions of men would be baptized all at once. They would march them through a river. They would march them through a lake, some body of water. If a man was right-handed, he would hold his right hand out of the water, not allow it to get wet. If he were left-handed, he would hold his left hand out of the water. So that as they came out of the water, that they could say, this hand has never been baptized. And they could swing their battle axes just as freely as ever. This is religious hypocrisy. And there are too many of us that can get caught up in that kind of a life where there are parts of our life that we are not surrendering to the Lord. I want to see the Lord bless your life. I want to see the Lord bless you so that your head explodes as you see his great blessing and his richness upon your life. And those blessings will be realized if we get down and mean business with him. If we mean business with our God, our God will mean business with us. And oh, how rich will be our eternity. Let's pray that the Lord helps us. Let's pray that the Lord causes us to continue to put one foot in front of another. And let's be faithful to our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the incredible blessing that lies in wait for those of us who have the Son. We thank you, Father, that there is joy. Oh, what is it going to be like? Father, we thank you for the rich reward that will be ours in Christ.
And Lord, I pray that you would help us to just judge everything that we are tempted to do and everything that we are tempted to be a part of in this life. Enable us to judge whether or not we get involved based upon what kind of an effect is that going to have upon our eternity. And Lord, would you help us to exhort and to encourage one another daily to love and good works. And Father, as John says at the end of this document, Lord, <laughs> we pray now, O oh Jesus, come quickly. For we ask these things in his name. Amen.